On the evening of January 24th in 2006, friends and family of then 24-year-old Floridian Jennifer Kessie had already begun to pass out flyers requesting information on the whereabouts of the young women who had vanished either late the night before or early that morning. By the following day, news of her disappearance had spread beyond Orlando and into national news outlets. The FBI wants to take another look at a missing persons case that has baffled investigators now for four years. Jennifer Kessie has been missing since January 24, 2006. West 2's Gail Pasco brown shows us how a renewed effort is being put into this case. She has the late-breaking details. We see this as very good to us, and uh, we're, we're very happy that uh, Chief Demings has released the files to FBI to take a look at. Before she vanished, Jennifer seemed to have it all, a loving family and boyfriend, a great job, and no reason for her to drop everything and run away. Her loved ones naturally assumed that something terrible must have happened. That remains the prevailing assumption today, but more than a decade later, detectives still not have made much headway in the case. There is some haunting grain video footage of a person of interest, and authorities have found Kessie's abandoned car but there is overall minimal physical evidence for law enforcement to work with. So what exactly happened to Jennifer in 2006? On January 23rd, Jennifer returned home from work around 6 at night and chatted with her family on the phone sometime after that. She called her boyfriend later that night at around 10 p.m. before turning in for bed. Robert Allen, Jennifer's boyfriend, would be the last person in Jennifer's inner circle to have contact with her. Usually before work, Jennifer calls or texts her boyfriend as she was leaving for work, but no messages came on the morning of January 24th. Concerned, Robert made several attempts to contact his girlfriend, but Texts went unreturned and phone calls went straight to voicemail. Co-workers had also begun to wonder why they hadn't heard from Kessie. It was unlike her to not call in and she had missed an important morning meeting. At 11am on January 24th, Jennifer's employer contacted her parents to inform them of the situation. Realizing that something was amiss with their daughter, Drew and Joyce Kessie made the drive from Tampa to Orlando to check if their daughter was at her home. They soon discovered that her car was missing but that her condo did not show any sign of disarray. They found a damp towel, puddles in the shower suggesting she was washed before going to work, a pair of pajamas on the floor, and some makeup on the counter. Tell me about Jennifer. She literally is the friend that will drop anything for you. She once drove an hour to me because I was having a, um, a meltdown over a breakup. And looking back on it, it was really the stupidest thing, but she dropped everything to eat ice cream and sit there with me and watch TV until the wee hours of the morning. And this was at a time we didn't live together. All of this evidence seemed to indicate that Kessie had left for work as usual. It should be noted that the Orlando police never processed Jennifer's condo as a crime scene. So where was she? In the years following Jennifer's Kessie's disappearance, police have managed to track down her car but not much else. Two days after Kessie disappeared, police received a phone call from somebody who had seen a photo of her car on the news and thought it looked like a lot like the one parked outside their apartment complex. It was indeed the car in question, a black 2004 Chevrolet Malibu. Upon analyzing the car at the police crime lab, just two pieces of physical evidence were recovered. A latent print and a fiber deemed too minuscule to yield any helpful information. And because Jennifer's personal effects like her cell phone and purse have never been located, it can be summarized that the motive of the suspect was not robbery. While the lack of physical evidence from the car was frustrating, the video footage captured from the apartment complex was just as disappointing for detectives. The video showed a person of interest dropping off the car at noon on the day of the disappearance but any physical description of the suspect is almost entirely obscured by the apartment gates. The cameras were designed to capture images just once every three seconds, as opposed to continuously. And it just so happened that at each interval, the person of interest was obscured by a different gate post while walking by. 
Investigators went so far as to tap NASA to enhance video footage of the person, but have been unable to determine whether that person was even a man or a woman. Police could only discern that the person was between 5 foot 3 and 5 foot 5 inches. Journalists who covered the story reported that the obscured footage made this person of interest the luckiest person of interest ever. I've wanted to quit to all the, to all the families that you talk to and that hear this. I've wanted to quit so many times. I can't. I want to quit. Every day I want to quit. I can't. I created Jennifer. I love her. I raised her. She's my, she's my flesh and blood. I can't give it up. So I'm sorry. And I don't take that away from anyone else who can't do it. Without much physical evidence to go on, the investigation turned to those who knew Jennifer Kessie. Her boyfriend and brother both checked out, and an ex-boyfriend who wanted to rekindle the relationship was also ruled out. Detectives learned that an older work colleague had unsuccessfully pursued a romantic relationship, but he too was determined unsuspicious. Jennifer had mentioned to her family that construction workers doing renovations at her complex would occasionally catcall, but those leads also turned up to nothing. Her credit cards were unused after her disappearance and her cell phone had been turned off. The beloved daughter of the Kessie family was nowhere to be found and there was no clues to go on. L.E. called off the search, much to the disappointment and disagreement of the family. I think they are open to all of the possibilities at this point. They've definitely mentioned trafficking from time to time, but I wouldn't put much into that. Unconcluded podcast host when answering and ask me anything on Reddit. I theorize with no actual evidence that Jennifer was either abducted whilst on her way to work prior to her disappearance. Jennifer and her boyfriend were on a holiday. This could mean that while she was away, someone could have been planning this whole thing and wanted to abduct her when she came back. Or my second and most really realistic theory is that when she was going to work, she didn't. She just left everything behind and moved away somewhere. Now, as crazy and unreasonable as that sounds, this could have been her escape plan. She might have seemed happy. She might have had the perfect job, had the perfect university degree, had the perfect friends. But she just wasn't happy where she is. Now... Talking with her family on the podcast and her friends on the podcast, they all deny that Jennifer would do something like this. But I would disagree. No one really knows Jennifer as much as Jennifer knows Jennifer. I know it's something to... But sometimes, that's just it. You would rather. You don't really know. The same way I was babbling on about this whole story that she just wanted to leave. The same way I don't know. Is the same way you don't know now if you guys like that video a subscribe would mean the world to me a like to the video would tell me that you guys want to see more content like this uh, comment what you thought about the video uh, I'll also be linking Jennifer Kessie's uh, GoFundMe page which you can support her uh, investigation down there I'll also be linking a couple of things that you should really check out if you really want to dive deep into uh, this whole Jennifer case. Uh, like I said, the unconcluded podcast, they made, I believe, about 10 or 15 episodes on it. I tried to listen to as much as I could. I'm sorry I didn't listen to all of it. Um, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.